Hello loves, your friendly Texas based Anglophile here with another installment in our food category for Americans who love Britain. I told you in the last video that I really, really love uh, everything Britain when it comes to the holiday period and we've got a great recipe for you today. It is a recipe that I'm calling the ultimate Christmas trifle. Little story behind this recipe. Um, when I was uh, five years as editor of the BBC Insider, I used to print recipes around the October-November time period so people who wanted to make traditional British fare for the holidays, I would print four or five recipes. And during that five years, this recipe for this ultimate Christmas trifle uh, was the number one requested recipe of all the readership of PBS stations across the country. A little story behind this recipe, I actually stole it from one of my favorite people. She's not only one of my favorite people, she is my favorite Canadian. And joining me now is Annette Love. Hi Annette, good Hi, to see honey. you. Thanks for being Hi, here everybody. to do this. I'm so happy she volunteered to do this. You know, I put it out on uh, Facebook. I didn't volunteer. You she did. Me. You did. You did. No, she didn't. She was recruited. Well, she kind of hinted that she might ought to be involved in the video, just like as an idea. And I said, oh, hell yeah. So here we go. But uh, before we get started, I'm going to run you through the ingredients. And as usual, I'll have the ingredients as we talk about them at the bottom of the screen, but also down in the description. I'll also have a link for a printable version uh, of the uh, of the recipe. So, but we got to start this in the uh, tradition of uh, the finest uh, British cooks. You know, guys, I always have to have our favorite bevy before we get started. And for those of you that don't know, bevy is English slang for uh, uh, your favorite cocktail. So today, I did champagne on the Yorkshire puddings. Today, I've chosen Jose Cuervo. By the way, we're taping this kind of a early on a Saturday, so you know I think even British cooks would take a shot even before the pubs open, don't you? Oh, definitely. So I'm going to take uh, some of this blue agave tequila here, and I've got one for you already poured. And now here uh, where we're from, we're we're both in Texas. We don't sip tequila; uh -huh. uh, we neck it, That's it. which is uh, British slang neck it is British slang for taking a shot. So, salute, cheers. 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 Uh, oh, four or five more of those. <laughs> and I'll be getting naked. Oh, no. Uh, you've kind of been there for that, haven't oh, you? Oh, no, yes. All right, I want to run you through our ingredients real quick, and then I'm going to hand it over to Annette to tell you how to assemble it. And uh, one sentence she told me long ago when we first had this, we had a Christmas party at your parents' house, and you made this, the longer it sits, the better it gets. It's like lasagna, it's like a good casserole, it's like chili, it gets better with age. So if you make it the day before, it's gonna be even better for your- Let it sit overnight. Absolutely. Well, what we got here, and again, this is Annette's recipe, and by the way, in the uh, BBC's Insider, I actually called it Annette's Trifle, so I did give you credit for it. Thank you. Yeah, you're famous <laughs> or notorious. But what we got here, guys, you can go and get just a plain old Sara Lee. Now, her recipe calls for two of the regular size Sara Lee uh, pound cakes. They're, they're in the frozen section. I just got one family size for this, and it usually makes enough for like two sets of layers. But what we got here is the count, pound cake, and I've kind of diced it up. And last night, I uh, soaked it in brandy or sprinkled brandy over it. And guys, I went to my local liquor store and they had a 99 cent bin, and this is actually good brandy. Okay. This is the exact amount of brandy you need to put in your pound cake. So I had one of these and put it on. So that soaked overnight, but a couple of hours just to let it permeate. We've got uh, strawberries and raspberries and walnuts for our fruit and nut section. That's right. <laughs> that, that kind of fits me, right? Right. But uh, you can use blueberries and all that, and, and, and that's going to talk to you about variants on all of this. but. Uh, I chose strawberries, raspberries, um, uh, walnuts, and then the best part of all to me in this particular trifle recipe is we have white chocolate uh, jello uh, pudding. 
It's, uh, I use instant. Now her recipe calls for two cups of each, but I never, I think you can never have too much. Oh. So I made three cups of each just to have extra. You know, it depends on the size of your trifle we might too. Need a snack before yeah, we might. Need, <laughs> after this is over, we may need some sustenance. <laughs> I think that tequila's already going oh, in my no. head. But anyway, uh, white chocolate pudding and regular chocolate pudding, the large box. Uh, I had to do two small boxes of this because they don't make the large box. And then, of course, your whipped cream. But those are the basic ingredients. No cooking, really, because I used instant on the pudding. But I'm going to have Annette talk to you about it, uh, the variants on it, and have her put it together for you. But I will tell you, it makes a beautiful dish. People will think that you are the chef de cuisine when you look at this thing and put it on your table. It's completely impressive. So I'm Absolutely. going to turn it over to you, Annette. Well, let's start with what you put trifle in. And typically, it goes in a trifle bowl. And they typically look like this. They're usually on a pedestal. They're usually crystal of some sort. And they're always a clear glass because we eat with our eyes first. And the whole beautiful presentation about trifles, you get to see all the layers of yumminess that are in the dish. So it's a great investment if you don't have one yet. Go out to the store and get one. They're not that expensive. They're a dish that you can use for so many other things besides just trifles, salads, it, you know, berries, whatever. But it's a good investment, so look at a trifle bowl, but there's always other options. You don't have to use a trifle bowl. You can use a glass bowl that doesn't have a pedestal. Right. Or, if you have one of these sitting in your kitchen, which most of us do, guess what? You already have a trifle bowl. You just didn't know it yet. Turn it upside down. Put the dish in. Now that's a trifle. Pedestal trifle bowl. I double the ingredients, folks, for this right. one. But you know what? If for you a have party, a big gathering... You're all set. You already have one. You bet. So you can use lots of different things. That's awesome. All right. Let's talk about pound cake. If you're organic and you have your mama's favorite sour cream organic pound cake recipe, make it. It's fabulous. But for us hardworking mamas that don't have a lot of time to pre-bake a whole lot of things to make something, this works perfectly. And Sara Lee, Intamins, any of them are great. You can use whatever kind of liquor you want. You don't have to stick with just brandy. Where trifle came from, which means back in the day, of no consequence, it's inconsequential, where trifle came from was a way to use leftovers. That's how the whole recipe came together. So it's a great way to use up things that are left over from the holidays or start from fresh. You can use brandy. You can use cognac, you rum. can use port, you can use ice wine. Would you use rum in it? Heck yeah, if you like rum. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's whatever like a, flavor you want. Absolutely. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the cake because we want to make a base in the bottom of the bowl. So we're going to start with a layer of cake. So just get a good layer in the bottom. The great thing about this is there's no wrong way to do trifle. If it's your recipe, it's your recipe, and you can put it in any order that you want to. All right, next, we're gonna go to puddings. And we're gonna go, and we're gonna layer, because you can already see the first layer on the bottom is cake, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start going around the edge of the trifle with the white chocolate. Now, here's something else I wanna share with your viewers, Scott, that might just change their world. Do you love Bavarian cream? Mm -hmm. Do you love Bavarian cream like I do? Well, here's the deal. Bavarian cream, to make it from scratch, is difficult, right? You separate eggs, you cook the custard on the stove, you gotta do all the extra steps, you gotta wait for it to cool before you can use it. Well, I'm gonna share with you a recipe right now where you can make something that is almost exactly like Bavarian cream with only three ingredients and it doesn't it involves no cooking wow. no cooking and it only takes five minutes are you ready okay you need two cups of heavy whipping cream all right that's always a good start absolutely right and then you need a large box of jello instant vanilla pudding okay okay and two to four tablespoons of regular milk and I'll tell you where that comes in in just a minute you're gonna whip that cream until you have stiff peaks mm -hmm. you're going to fold in the pudding 
you're going to add a tablespoon of milk at a time until you get the desired consistency that you want for whatever you use. So the milk is kind of a thinning agent to it, just regulate consistency. Yeah, because if you're going to stuff it into a cupcake or a profiterole, you want it pretty tight. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use it just on the top of something or something in a trifle like this, it can be pretty loose. Right. So that just, it's however you want it to be. So now we're laying berries, and then you have the varying cream, and it took you just a few minutes. That it's would be fabulous. Awesome. Just add Try it. it. You, would, you would add it to the recipe here? You wouldn't yes. replace anything? No, i just add it. Absolutely. Or if you want to, you can replace the white chocolate with the, the Bavarian cream. I but think I'll drink to that. It's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. <laughs> All right, one more layer, guys, and we're going to put in walnuts. Walnuts are in English and a Canadian nut. I'm sorry. I know in the south it's all about the pecans, but where we come from, it's not. It's what, about the walnuts. Which you can use, right? Absolutely. You can use walnuts. You can use almonds. It, that's the great thing about trifle. There's no wrong way to make it. You can make it however you want. All right, let's go so for... So we got the walnuts in. We got the walnuts. Now it's time to just do it all over again. Okay. Very easy. So we're going to take our liquor-soaked cake. All right. By the way, did you take a whiff of that? I hope I put enough in there. I, I snacked some already. <laughs> this is the best part of the whole thing. Where, where else do you get liquor soap cake and recipe? Right. Right? So here we go. That's awesome. All right. We got another layer of cake. And you can see it. It's fabulous. We'll show you a really good shot here in a minute. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back to the white chocolate pudding. I always start around the edge because that way I make sure that it's very pretty and it goes all the way around what's left in the middle is fine so start with the edge you burning your nose here it's over there <laughs> i had i had to toast the walnuts well yes get it or are the walnuts toasty now <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm the one getting it toasted in that it's all about the holidays it it's is. all about the fun all right guys here we go all right, there's that layer. Does it look fabulous already or what? It does. It's very impressive and, and it's so funny because yes, you will you will completely freak your guests out that you worked so hard to make this multi-layer dessert when we're all gonna know and be in on the secret that it's just layers of this and you don't even have to cook if you don't want to. All right, dark chocolate all the way around the edge. All right. And I got to tell you, Annette, the white chocolate with the chocolate pudding to me is what, what really um, vanilla captured me on the recipe when you first made it. Vanilla doesn't do it. No. Nope. And nope. It, you, it's got to be the white chocolate. It, there's something different about it and that the taste together, you're right, are, are spectacular. All right. One last layer of berries. All the way around. I wish you could smell this. It's just can, chocolate and berry heaven. <laughs> You're going to have all the fun, but you know what? I figure since I stole the recipe, that's okay. It's up. We'll share. All right, and then beautiful raspberries all over the top. And it is really pretty with the with the two different. And now yes. your original one had blueberries in it. Yes. Which I don't know. I guess. It's all and personal preference. Absolutely. I like blueberries only in muffins, but I mean, you can use whatever fresh berry you want. Hey, that's exactly it. it very, like I said, there's no wrong way to make trifle. And I do, and I do like the uh, flavor of the raspberries with uh, the strawberries. Oh. And there we go. You got to put the whipped cream on absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's not dessert until you have a squirt of in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and even, even, uh, even when you serve it later, um, you can put uh, just a dollop of uh, whipped cream on the top of it when you get to the bottom. Just like when you serve your pumpkin pies, you don't right. put it on, on it at the beginning. Right. If right. you have more left over, absolutely. When you serve it, give them a fresh squirt. But this top layer, you know, it looks real nice. It's and beautiful. then, uh, and here's and look at the side. You look with your eyes. It's beautiful. I love that. I love that. And you saw how easy it was to put together. There's, there's no difficulty whatsoever. And you can make it as easy as you want. Prefab the cakes, make instant pudding, and you've got a beautiful dessert to share with your family and friends for holidays. Well, there you go, folks. A perfect Christmas trifle for this season. 
I want to thank uh, Annette Love. You're always a love oh, coming in. And again, not only one of my favorite people, but also my favorite Canadian, which is part of the Queen's Empire, is it not? Well, not anymore. We, oh. we were kind of... We well, kind we still of, carry the flag well, a little of course, bit. And, and the culture and the traditions. You know, high tea, all of it. We're, it's all good. Maybe we'll get to cook again. I would like to. I would like to. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure and give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. In the description below, again, I've got a uh, printable link uh, for Annette's trifle uh, recipe here. Also, um, again, thumbs up, like the channel, subscribe to the channel. Also, for my viewers down below in the description, I have a special deal from Audible.com. If you like listening to books instead of reading them, you can get your first month free and your first book download free just uh, for uh, clicking the link below. So, again, my thanks to Annette Love, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get a lot out of this. We've got uh, uh, materials coming in for more Christmas videos that will be delivered this week, so we'll be doing more of the traditional British Christmas I was so happy to have Annette here to do the ultimate Christmas trifle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Merry Christmas, everyone.